Can an epidural that you get during childbirth cause you chronic back pain? The short answer is no. Epidurals that are administered for childbirth do not typically cause chronic lower back pain. But doc, my back has hurt ever since I had the epidural. It's a chronological relationship, not causational. What does that mean? Let's take a step back and talk about the case. I presented the case of a 31 year old female who has had back pain ever since her first baby. She states the pain began around the time that she had the epidural for delivery. The pain is constant, is in her lower back, and does not radiate. First, let's talk about what an epidural catheter is. Epidural catheters are typically placed during childbirth in order to administer medications to alleviate pain during childbirth. Medications for pain are then administered through that catheter, so think of it like an IV for your nerves. Here is where the catheter actually goes. It crosses the skin, goes through the interspinous ligament, and then straight into the epidural space, which is before you get into the spinal fluid space where the nerves are, and definitely before you get into where the bones or the discs are in the spine. Here is another picture that demonstrates that. Now it's typical to have some lower back pain and or tenderness at the site of where the catheter was, but after it's removed, all that pain resolves within a few days. Think of it like taking an IV out. So if it's not from the epidural, then why does her back still hurt? During delivery, ligaments in the pelvis relax in order to make the opening of the pelvis larger for the baby to come out. In addition to that, the abdominal muscles, which are the source of your core strength, are also stretched during pregnancy and postpartum. And some women are even left with a diastasis rectus or chronic separation of those core muscles of the abdominal wall. So you can imagine if you have pelvic floor weakness and weakness of your abdominal core, your back doesn't have a lot of support. If you look at the human skeleton, you can see the lack of bony support in this area, which is why our core muscle strength is so important to help support our spine. Combine that with what you have to do to care for a newborn. Carry the baby, breastfeed the baby, bend over to put baby in and out of the bassinet, and leaning over to change diapers multiple times a day. Clean bottles and do lots of baby laundry. And that's not even counting what we have to do to care for ourselves or other members of our family. All of those things can strain the back and our core is in a vulnerable situation. It's a recipe for back pain. In our patient, we mentioned that she had a C-section, which can also make your core very vulnerable during that post-operative window. I showed that she had a normal MRI, which means she had not injured any of her discs in her back. I also mentioned that the pain is at the center of her back, which would typically exclude sacroiliac joint pain, which can also happen after pregnancy. After doing a thorough review of her imaging and a physical examination, it was deemed that she did not have an intrinsic spine problem. She had weak support for her spine. Then how do we fix it? Physical therapy and occupational therapy to work on core strengthening and resolution of the diastasis can provide significant relief. And no, that's not going to do a bunch of crunches because that can actually make the diastasis worse. Crunches, sit-ups, and planks all focus on the midline of your abdominal wall, which can make the diastasis worse. Exercises that do help are pelvic tilts, which is demonstrated right here. Toe taps is where you have your knees like this, and then slowly let one leg down at a time to touch your toe to the floor. Heel slides are another great exercise. There was a recent meta-analysis that was published in World Neurosurgery last month that showed that some studies showed correlation between diastasis and lower back pain, and some did not. The bottom line is better studies are needed to show the effects and association between the two. Hopefully I just helped explain why there is a relationship between poor core strength and lower back pain. The bottom line is there are multiple reasons why women are prone to developing lower back pain after delivering a baby. And it's most likely not the epidural. Back to our patient, she underwent a therapy program dedicated to help building her core strength back. She also sought the help of a nutritionist to work on lifestyle modifications for her diet. She was able to lose those extra 30 pounds and between her diet changes and her core strengthening, her back pain was markedly improved. And that was without any medications, injections, or surgery. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case.